Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on how to create a button that has mouse click functionality, click functionality, so that when you click it, you can trigger any other device in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So this is obviously something that has tremendous application. And I just want to say that this is just a very basic program and there's a lot of improvements that could be made to it, but I just want to show you what is possible. And so this is mostly aimed at people that are just getting started with Unreal Editor for Fortnite and Verse. So what we've got here in the game is I've got a creature spawner, I've got an item spawner with a gun, and I've got two triggers, and of course I've got a Verse device. And I wanted to show you this first, is that one of these triggers is simply a activation trigger, and we don't need to see it. So when we go into the game, the only trigger that we're going to see is this one, which is going to trigger our button to appear. And then when our button appears, our action is going to be frozen, and all we can do is click that button. And then as soon as we click that button, it's going to spawn in creatures and spawn in a weapon. So here we go. I'll hit start and show you what this looks like. Okay, so I'm in the game. The spawner came in. Of course, there's only one. Nothing's happening there. And then you notice there's nothing over here, right? So that this isn't going to be enabled. I can walk over here right now, and nothing's going to happen because it's disabled. So when I trigger this device now, my button's going to pop up on the screen. So I trigger this device. And this button says activate mayhem <laughs> and I hit that and you notice it spawns in a gun and the creature spawner thing triggered. So I'll get my assault rifle and I'll probably get slaughtered here, but let's see what happens. So now I think they're going to start coming out here in a minute. There they come. Let's see if I can take care of these guys. One of these guys is gold and he's really hard to get rid of. They're a little different each time. And that... Oh, they keep coming over here. Wait, where did... I don't know if I can keep up with all these guys. Well, maybe I need to get out of the thing. I don't think I'm going to have enough ammo for everybody. Why so serious? There we go. So anyway, this is, like I said, it has a lot of functionality. And But anyway, I'll be back in just a minute to get started. I again wanted to emphasize that this is just a prototype of just showcasing what is possible, how you can create an on-clicked button that can trigger any device. There's a lot of improvements that can be made to the code, but this is just kind of the base template that you can start from. There's a lot of improvements that can be made, but it's mostly for beginners just to show the concept. So anyway, I'm in a blank island template, and I'm going to go ahead and delete that one island spawner. And for this, we just need four devices, so we're going to go and get those now. First thing we need is two trigger devices. So I'm just get those and drag those onto the scene. And then I need a creature spawner here, and I'm going to drag that way onto the scene, put it way over there. And the last thing I'm going to get is an item spawner. Item spawner and item spawner here and I'm just going to put it over here by the trigger. Okay so there's just a few settings we need to adjust so I'm going to select the creature spawner first and the only thing we need to do here is under this advanced tab you'll see enable the game start and we just turn it off. So it'll come into the game but it won't spawn any creatures until it's activated and then there's our item spawner here and there's just a few things we need to do just turn off all the spawning functions we don't want it spawning or respawning anything additionally we just want it to spawn one time and we want it to spawn a rifle or something so we can kill the creatures I guess a burst assault rifle should do. Okay, and there is that. Now for our trigger devices, for this one device, we don't even have to do anything other than just rename it. So with it selected in the outliner, we're going to press F2, and we're just going to call this trigger. We'll leave it called trigger, and then just add UI to the end. 
Now this is, and we need to be able to see where that is. And this one is a little more tricky on the trigger too. This is our activation trigger. So this is what's going to actually, with our code, we're going to activate this trigger. And when it's activated, then it's going to activate any other devices that we connect to it. So I'm going to go F2 here, and we're just going to call this activation trigger like that. And it's going to go up to the top. We don't want it visible in the game because the player doesn't need to see it. We don't want the player to be able to trigger it. It can be enabled on game start. We don't want it triggered by vehicles or sequencers or water or anything else. And we really don't need it triggering any VFX. And that is it. And like I said, we don't need to set this because we are going to get to it through the code. And we're going to link to it through our verse device. Now for this creature spawner way over here, we do want to enable it from this activation trigger. So we're going to come in here and go enable, search for that activation trigger. And once it's triggered, we want our creature spawner to spawn. And then we are going to go ahead and add one more. We're going to click on our item spawner here. And we want to have it spawn an item when our trigger is activated too. It's going to send out a activation signal for those devices. And as far as I know, that's all we need to do with our devices. So now we can go into building the verse, which is what this tutorial is mostly about. So we'll go up to the verse explorer. We're going to right click and I'm going to add a new verse device. I already have the code written and I am going to call this one click button triggers. So we're just going to call this click button underscore triggers and we'll go create. And it just takes a minute to build that for us. Then once that's built, we can just drag, oops, not that this device, we can just drag it into the scene. And now we'll go ahead and work on our code. So we'll double click this. And like I've done in other tutorials, I've already written the code, but I'm going to just paste it in to save time because we'd be here forever if I wrote it line by line. Anyway, so I left an error in this so that you can, I wanted to show you something that's really trippy. Okay, so I'll hit control A. And then up here, I'll click and I'll go control V. And you notice we get these, all these red squiggly lines. And I left this in on purpose because I wanted to show you something. Notice it says here, functions declared at this scope are not supported. And if you're new, it might freak you out of like, well, I have no idea what did I do wrong. And you won't believe what's wrong. There's an extra space right here. So all we have to do is backspace and that all goes away. So they say that verse was supposed to be simple to learn, but and it in some instances is, but it's very unforgiving in a lot of ways, I want to say, is it's strictly typed and it's a functional programming language and it's I found it to be very very precise. <laughs> and I guess that's to prevent errors at runtime. So anyway, I'll just go over this real quick. There's our modules up here. This initiates our creative device. So this click button triggers our verse device here, inherits everything from all the creative devices. We have our activation trigger here and our trigger UI. And so those are, I think, pretty self-explanatory. This creates text for our button. So if we want to change it, I can just type in something here like activate mayhem. And then here we create a variable for our player canvas. Here is on the trigger UI, this reference to that device. When it's triggered, when we walk on it, then it's going to subscribe to this set button function down here. This line of code is very similar. This took me the longest to figure out 
but basically this is a like you can almost think of it as casting and it's checking to make sure that there's a player in there and if it there is then it's assign it to valid agent and then the valid agent is going to assign it to player and then once we have that we can put that into our player ui and then here we create our ui and add our widget and then i just have a print string in there for good measure then once it calls up here it creates everything up here and then it also creates this on clicked subscribe event so on button clicked and that's down here and that sets up our our message and everything and then down here this line of code right here is what triggers our activation trigger so this would be the same as if we walked on it in the game but this right here is a call to our trigger device to activate send out a notification that it's been activated and then this line here this line of code basically removes our widget from the screen so if you want the widget to stay on there just you can just delete that line of code but there's not a lot of code here so you can just print this out and study it on your own time and look up things that you don't know here there's three different types of buttons that are available to us. So we up here we can switch it from to a loud button or to a quiet button. There's only three button types that are available to us. But I don't see any red squiggly lines, so it looks like we're good to go. So I'm just going to minimize that then. And we'll come up to verse and build our verse code. And you'll see when I do, then we can make our references to our devices in the game. So... This is it, why it was important to rename these so we know what's what. So I want my activation trigger to my activation trigger. And I want my trigger UI to my trigger UI. And that should be it. And then we just simply go launch. And it takes a few minutes. Once it's done, I'll come back and we'll see if we have any problems. Okay, so it looks like we're ready to go. And I'll hit start game. And so I'm spawned in. And you'll notice there's no items over there. No items have spawned in. And you'll notice our creature spawner doesn't respond when I walk over here because it's not enabled. So that is all correct. Now the minute I walk over this trigger, it's going to freeze me in space and then the button will pop up. So now I'm frozen, I can't move, and then there is our button there. And you could have more buttons, as many buttons as you wanted, really. And you could place them anywhere you wanted on the screen. So now as, as soon as I hit activate, you'll see I'm free to go and my gun spawned in. And you could, like I said, you can trigger any device that you want. So now the uh, creature, oh, the gold one's here. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. He's, he's a bad dude. He's really bad. Uh, no, he, he's tough. He's a tough one. He's a really tough guy. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Gosh. Can I hit him with the thing? I'm, I'm not going to make it. Sorry. Well, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs>